So you're in matric and you're freaking out. Hello beautiful people, my name is Kiyura and welcome or welcome back to my channel. If this is one of the first videos of mine that you're watching, please hit the subscribe button down below as well as hit the bell notification so you won't miss out on any of my future videos. I post videos on an array of topics every single Wednesday and Saturday. For today's video, well actually let me give a backstory. So my previous video was all the advice that I have for people going into university now in September or next year or that are already in first year. And I had one of my friends message me and he was like, cool video about, you know, the university stuff, but some of us are still in matric. And he said that prelims are starting around August 17th, I'm pretty sure for most of you guys. Prelims in South Africa is basically like your trials or like your pre-exams. Um, and it's where you kind of see how the government will test you and then they kind of let you see how the questions are laid out um, and kind of get a feel for it before you actually write your final exam in at the end of matric or grade 12. And so I thought maybe I should make a video about the tips that helped me in matric. These tips really do work because at the end of matric, I'm not bragging in any way. I'm just trying to show you that these tips do work. I got six out of seven A's and the one A that I didn't get was math. Obviously, I missed it by 2%, but still, these tips really do work for every single subject and I'm sure that they'll work for you. Just a disclaimer, this is based on my experience as an NSC or a public school student, but the although the testing systems might be different for IEB, IB and NSC, the basics of the studying behind it should be the same so i'm sure that these tips can apply to all of you so the first tip that i have for you guys is to be consistent yes i actually do mean to start right from the beginning of the year when you do start with your syllabus but since i am posting this video um a bit late i mean like after this video go and start studying right now because you only have less than a week until your prelims start do this by having timetables, to-do lists, both weekly and daily, just to make sure that you are covering every single one of your subjects, all of your topics, etc, etc. And in terms of also being consistent, make sure that you keep up with the handout or the syllabus that your teacher should give you, which gives you an overview of what you'll be tested with. And make sure you're ticking it as you are going um, through or finishing the studying part of it being consistent really does help because i'm not saying um look at one subject then look at the next and look at the next look at the next or look at the next topic i mean on a daily basis go and revise at least two or three sections from each subject because the more that you read over it the more it will be stuck in your brain or even if you don't read over it, go write out key points that you take from every single little thing so that when it comes to the day uh, before or the week before your test starts, you really will have an idea then of what's going on rather than just starting from scratch and kind of having to learn everything from the beginning. The second thing is a tip that I give to anyone that asks me how I study or how I kind of... Um, prepare for tests and exams and that is to please learn what kind of learner you are. A lot of times study tubers or um, people that have study blocks will show you all these really pretty kind of notes and stuff but in actual fact that kind of study method only only works for someone that is a visual learner such as myself. I'm a visual learner and so how to go about finding what kind of learner you are First of all, ask yourself, you know, how do I retain like um, words or information better? Is it if someone tells me it? Is it if I read it somewhere? Is it if someone kind of shows me it? Or the easier way is to take a quiz. There is so many quizzes 
um like on google just type in what type of learner am i quiz and that's what i did to find out what kind of learner i am and that should tell you kind of what would be the best study method with it as well so for me i took a personality test for um myself and what kind of learner i am i think in grade nine or so and i found out i am like a mixture between a visual learner and a reading and writing learner i'm going to insert some pictures of what my notes look like on the screen now you can see there's a lot of color use there's diagrams there's very fancy headings there's kind of blocking off just to make uh, like the categorization in my mind a bit better and the color does just help me to like if i'm thinking about whatever the question is asking me in the test i can kind of see the color or where it was on my page or see the diagram and it really does help to jog my memory but that's for me as a um, visual learner for you if you are an auditory learner or a kinesthetic learner go on to youtube and search ways to study as those type of learners there's so many information um, outlets that can tell you the different ways that you can study which will optimize your learning capability for whatever learning style is your best in terms of me i just showed you my visual um, kind of study notes but on top of that i am a reading and writing kind of learner so i had about i went through about four um, hardcover A4 296 page books and so after I would finish making my colorful notes and stuff like that I would revise from that notes about four or five times during um, you know preparing for the test the next tip is to have all your study notes done before the session or your exam period even starts so for instance if you are starting on August 17th I would make sure all of my study notes are done by the, let's say, 14th of August, right? And this helps to, one, give you peace of mind that you kind of have an idea of what's going on for all of your subjects. And the second thing, which most people don't really take into account when they are studying, and that is that active studying is so much more better than passive studying. And what I mean by this is, with active studying going with my reading and writing kind of personality learning type thing i mean actually physically going out and re-revising by either writing out or doing past papers past papers i swear in matric exams are your best best friend because there's only a certain way that um, questions can be asked especially if you're taking theoretical subjects like i did i took bio um oh my god history geography and then maths core and then obviously english uh life orientation and i took afrikaans and i will show you the stack of papers that i did throughout the thing here's the picture here yeah i went through all of that and i did the papers about two times each Dep obviously there's different subjects in there but for maths, I did the most past papers because one, doing past papers just kind of helps you to get a feel for how to manage your time, what the setup of the paper is going to look like. And especially doing it in like a, like the two or three days before your test and doing the papers completely in those three days. It just makes your, I don't know, like muscle memory, if I can say, if you do something over and over and over again, you're going to remember it a lot more. So rewriting out your notes if you are a reading and writing learner like me, but doing past papers, whether you're a reading, writing learner or not, is so much better than just reading over your notes two or three times. And going along with why you should have your study notes done beforehand is because you want to only focus on the week that is coming and like their exam. So you don't want to have like only maths and bio in the week but then you're also studying for things like business and technology and other subjects you want to focus in on what's going on with that week and do active revision only for that week number four is to take advantage of all of your resources i have said it even in my previous video and that is to ask questions 
your questions really will do so much to clarify yourself if you're not comfortable asking in the class book a consultation with your teacher stay after class to ask your teacher about why things are the way they are or why you don't understand something or how they can advise you to study the certain subject that you are whatever question you have i was really lucky i had wonderful teachers in um, matric but if you aren't really comfortable with your teacher go to the grade head of that subject or look up videos on Khan Academy. Just ask around, even ask people that have finished matric how they studied or understood. Get tutoring lessons. Take every single thing that is at your disposal and make use of it so that you can get the optimum results that you want. Going along with this though is when you are getting any tests back and for your final final exam when you're getting your prelims back, go through your paper with your teacher very rare i can't even remember if they went through the memo with us like after we got our prelims i really can't remember but if you find something in your test that you got wrong and you like completely completely like messed it up go with your teacher so they can help you go through your whole paper see where you got wrong maybe understand things and make notes of what you got wrong what you got right and what you need to focus on from even the practice papers that you're doing at home ha learning from your mistakes and having corrections to uh, go through and see where you went wrong will help you find the gaps in your knowledge and help you fill them up so that when it comes to the end of your matric year and you are going to be writing your final exams you know exactly what questions are going to be coming how to tackle them and how to get the optimum marks needed during your reading time which is usually five or ten minutes before they actually like you know give you your papers i mean before you can start writing your papers reading time i think is one of the most important uh, periods besides obviously writing your answers because in that just skim through your paper right don't be like other people that like actually think of the answer in their, ha in their head go or skim through your paper and see one the mark allocation because mark a minute is like your lifesaver so that you don't ever like not finish a section because you were stuck 20 minutes on a question that was worth two marks and the second thing is to see where which question has the things you know about the most like what i mean by this if in math you are so 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 confident in the financial side and um like algebra but you're not so good with things like um calculus start with the first two things that i mentioned and leave calculus till the last but uh obviously look at what the mark allocation is so that you don't spend all your time on the things that you only know but definitely definitely start with the things that you know first and then move on to things that you aren't you don't have to go question one two three four in a lot of my papers i actually went out of order as long as it is marked clearly this is question three four eight and then one five and nine on this page the marker then just has to go through their marking scheme and mark according to that so don't go according to the order of the paper if you're not confident with the first three questions but you're confident with the last seven number six is that acronyms are really your best friend if you took theoretical subjects like i did these are your life savers for anything from remembering different names of people to remembering the process of something to even remembering an essay in my trick i had um essays i think two no, one essay in every single one of my history papers. And I would um, write my essay beforehand because I kind of knew from previous tests and from teachers that uh, this or this section would be the most likely to be asked to be a, re uh, what you call it, a essay question. And I would learn that section off by heart. So what I would do is I would right let's say split it up into introduction three body and your conclusion and i would put five or six points for every single thing covering whatever i feel is the most important things from the section to include it and for each paragraph i had a certain acronym and eventually it would have like a sentence or like a whole story going on with the acronyms that i have made up and so when I would go to my history paper and they would start us off, I would immediately go to my essays first, 
write down all of my acronyms and go from my acronyms and write my essay and cross each uh, acronym word off to make sure that I have it in my essay. Acronyms are a great way to um, retain the most information and make sure that you're getting all the key points to get again your maximum mark in your test. The morning of your um, test. I know that there's a lot of stress because you are like oh my god this is like especially like your first few exams when you are really not sure of what to expect um, since it is prelims and finals they're very different from your final year exams because they are being fully made by your government or whoever is in charge of your syllabus but no one really in your school or that you will know of and so it can get very stressful so the two biggest things that I have for you is to one revise alone because a lot of times the times that I do did sit with like people in the morning either there would be too much noise and i get distracted by noise extremely extremely quickly when i am studying and the second thing is people would be revising out aloud and like talking to people and it would kind of confuse whatever i had understood about the the topic for instance i know that the sky is blue because of this this and this but then they say no, the sky is green because of this, this and this, even though the textbook said it was blue. And it kind of does mess with your brain or make you think that you don't understand your concept. So revising alone or revising with another person in a secluded area so that you can ask questions if you want, just to make sure that you're not confusing yourself and the noise isn't distracting you. And the second thing in the morning is to do something that calms you down. For me, this was praying. I prayed every single, um, like, few minutes before we went in to our examination venue or even before I just started my test it really helped me calm down but you don't need to pray if you're not religious do meditation just outside your um you know before you go in or while you're sitting at your desk and you're waiting for the papers to be handed out or just do breathing exercises where in you breathe for three seconds in through your nose you hold for three seconds and then you let go for three seconds and increase the count up until around three uh, up until about 10 seconds uh, for each interval this will really bring your heartbeat and your adrenaline levels down and help you feel a bit more zen and um, a lot more tensed and stressed if this also um, happens in the venue have water beside you and take a few sips before and not enough to make your bladder burst because in your matric exam the last thing you want is to kind of go to the uh, bathroom during the test and then like have to make up for that time but have water next to you actually were you allowed water i can't remember if you were allowed water in the examination venue but if you are allowed um then have it next to you and take a few sips um, during your test just to make that oxygen levels reach your brain make you feel a bit more refreshed and again less tensed up overall for matric i think it comes with a lot of stress because you are told from like grade 10 about what a big year it is and that you know these are the things that are going to get you into university and stuff but you need to have full faith in yourself you have to prepare as much as you can because that's all that anyone can ever ask you for if you constantly are stressing about uh, not doing well in the test, then you're not going to really leave any room for any um, knowledge to kind of stay in your head. So try, 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 just have faith in yourself. I know it sounds so much more easier said than done, but again, doing, I talked about this in my confidence video, but doing affirmations in the morning where you say, I'm going to succeed at this test. I'm going to get whatever mark you are striving for. I'm going to get into whatever ever university you want to get to or whatever your career you want to do. Doing affirmations in the morning just helps you put a lot more um, self-love into yourself and make you have faith that you are going to achieve what you want because... As long as you have prepared, that's all anyone can ask you for. And whatever results come with that, at least you'll know you did it wholeheartedly. The other thing is to make good, healthy meals. In my matric year, I became a vegetarian. I did that in my vegetarian story. And eating a lot of fruit and vegetables and kind of 
um, healthy meals. Obviously, I had cheat meals, like I had sometimes chocolate or I had like a sweet or something. But for the most part, my diet was quite healthy. This just helps keep your energy levels quite up. It helps with your uh, brain health. There's been so many um, researchers that have said that what you eat does affect your mood and your stress level. So definitely eating healthy, having a lot of water and not that much of cool drink because that kind of can mess up with your stomach and things like that. So sticking to water and healthy meals, having regular exercises um, to de-stress really does help. I'm a dancer, which I have said before. And during my matric year and my matric exams, me and my other friend, we both were in matric in the same year. We both, I don't think, missed even one lesson of dance. We were always, um, you know, going every single Saturday. And I think that just really helped because one, we could speak to each other and kind of uh, um, <laughs> make fun of whatever we did in the test. But also just being around something that I love so much, which is dance and my friends and my teacher really just made me feel better and have really a cutoff time from my kind of study time. And the last thing dealing with stress is depending on how many breaks or how many days you have in between your, um, your exams, take the day which you write your last or previous paper and take the rest of the day off. So for instance, I'll put it into perspective. If I write math today, and usually like math, I think finished at like 12 or like one o'clock, I would take the rest of that day off. And you know, I'd have like a really nice shower or bath. I'd have like a really nice meal. I'd watch a movie or I'd play with my dog or I'd do a board game with my sister or I'd draw or I'd practice dance. Just something on that day to kind of just cut off let your brain have a rest since you have been actively studying for like three days before that and then start afresh the next day with whatever paper is coming up after that and I would say make sure that you have at least two days in between your exams so that you can have two days to study before that exam so for instance don't go write maths today and then in not write tomorrow and then write the following day. Make sure you write today, have a break today so you can study tomorrow, the following day, and then have the test the next day. And with the stress also goes kind of looking forward to whatever your December plans are. I know with COVID right now, it is a bit uncertain. I'm not sure if the VAC is happening or if you are going to be able to travel or do something with your friends. But have something that you are looking forward to in December, whether that's like catching up on your series or it's going to a restaurant or not having to study until February the next year because that's when university starts. Um, just keeping something positive to look forward to. So that is the end of my video. I'm pretty sure there's other tips that I have forgotten about, but I really, really do wish all of my fellow matrix and, okay, not my fellow, my matrix and other seniors or grade 12s that are going to be writing their final exams in the next two weeks or are entering their senior or final year this year or next year, all, all, all of the luck to you guys. You guys are going to kill it. I know it just continue working there's only a few 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 more months or weeks until you are done with school give it your best shot have and create memories and i really do hope that this video really does help you if you guys want any other tips like this or if you have any other tips for anyone else leave them in the comments below because people do scroll through the comments um don't forget to like comment subscribe to help grow the family as well as if you'd like more videos like this or other entertaining ones and yeah good luck guys i wish you guys all the best and have a great week filled with lots of love happiness light positivity and good thinking for your metric exams love you guys bye